In societies dominated by modern conditions of production, life is presented as an immense accumulation of spectacles. Everything that was directly lived has receded into a representation. The images detached from every aspect of life merge into a common stream in which the unity of that life can no longer be recovered. Fragmented views of reality regroup themselves into a new unity as a separate pseudo-world that can only be looked at. The specialization of images of the world evolves into a world of autonomized images where even the deceivers are deceived. The spectacle is a concrete inversion of life, an autonomous movement of the non-living. The spectacle presents itself simultaneously as society itself, as a part of society, and as a means of unification. As a part of society, it is the focal point of all vision and all consciousness. But due to the very fact that this sector is separate, it is in reality the domain of delusion and false consciousness. The unification it achieves is nothing but an official language of universal separation. The spectacle is not a collection of images, it is a social relation between people that is mediated by images. The spectacle cannot be understood as a mere visual deception produced by mass media technologies. It is a worldview that has actually been materialized, a view of a world that has become objective. Awesome. Uh, and it's not only gentrification, it's also a lot of that new development, new condominiums and all the rest of it. Um, and it's kind of interesting, finance c uh, controls both uh, the creation of housing, the production of housing, and also its, its consumption. You lend money to the developers, they go in and gentrify a neighborhood, you then lend money to, to the people who are going to occupy it. And even if they don't have, as you've got to find that market for the gentrification once that process goes on. And so the, the, the connection then is the financial operators working on both ends of this, uh, of, this, of this game, if you like. Can you talk about what you mean by the right to the city? What I mean by the right to the city is that uh, we have, uh, I think, a real need right now to democratize decisions as to how a city shall be and what it shall be about so that we can actually have, if you like, a collective project about reshaping the urban, the urban world. I mean, here in this city, uh, effectively, the right to the city has been held by the mayor and, and the development office and the developers and the financiers. Most of us don't really have a very strong say. I mean, there are kind of community organizations and so on. So I think the democratization of the city, uh, city decision-making is crucial. And I think we want to claim, reclaim the right to the city for all of us so that we can all actually not only have access to what exists in the city, but also be able to reshape the city in a different image, in a different way, which is more socially just, more environmentally sustainable, and, and, and so on. At about the time that we were thinking of the fact that architecture could be more complex and could relate to ambiguity in life, we were very influenced by certain social scientists who began to criticize the architecture of urban renewal in America and to point out that these beautiful high-rise cities growing in the centers of our cities, uh, reminiscent of the social housing in Europe, were in fact not housing the poor in America. And that a beautiful utopian vision was becoming a nightmare for the poor who were removed to make room for these um, urban renewal areas. And that architect's vision was in a way helping the coercion. Apart from 15 minutes in a computer controlled shower and an hour exercising alone, Lacey will spend 23 hours a day locked in an 8 by 10 foot cell until he can earn his way out with good behavior. It's kind of a reprogramming station here to teach you that you don't have control. So long as you think you have control, you stay here. And it's just, I mean, it's the beginning. That's where you got to look at it. You know, no matter what, it takes at least 18 months to get out of here. Last time it took me five years. While Clacy's time here is just beginning, another inmate, Josue Gonzalez, will be released to the streets in just days. It will be his second time leaving solitary confinement. Your eyes always on getting out, right? And you have these thoughts of like, what if I fail? Should I even get out? 
when you calm down and you stop acting like this, then you'll get a chance to use the phone. Until then, you're going to sit there. She'll be a whole different person probably later on, especially if it was alcohol or drugs that's kind of caused her to do this. And with battery, uh, she's got to stay here for 12 hours because of, of the charge. After the 12 hours is up, she can bail herself out and she can get herself out of jail. Do you want to get another charge for destroying jail property? Do you want a charge? Then stop slam. You haven't... No. So she doesn't try to hurt herself. Uh, they'll go get the restraint chair. They'll call upstairs to a 2C. It's isolation to make sure they have a room for her for suicide watch. Slide her out. Keep her on the ground until you get the cuffs on her. 10, 5, 3... Dozens of Occupy Atlanta protesters, those who refused to leave Woodruff Park, were handcuffed and taken to jail. Fox 5's Denise Dillon is live at Woodruff Park with the latest. Good morning to you, Denise. Yeah, good morning. This all went down about five hours ago. You can still see a few police officers over here at the edge of the park. Police arrested dozens of protesters, including State Senator Vincent Fort, who in recent days has stood alongside the demonstrators. Go ahead, Frog. You take all the... Done at times more... But what is the Avoid the Ghetto app? This is Garmin. And I have Garmin GPS in the cars. And I have, well, and I have, no, I don't know. It's probably not, since it's built into the car, it's probably not Garmin. But the GPS on my iPhone is Garmin, and the GPS on my uh, iPad is Garmin, and the portable GPS I take with me when I rent a car and what have you, it's Garmin, and you know what? That's really handy because oftentimes when I rent a car, I'm not home. I'm somewhere that I am not familiar with. And you know what? If I'm not familiar with the area, I don't want to go driving into a high crime area. And Garmin has a feature that they are working on patenting right now. And this feature warns you when you ask for directions do you want to avoid high crime areas? You know, movie that. 